Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Apex Frozen Foods Limited Q1 FI24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Chaudhary Karuturi. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Neera. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us on this investor call for the first quarter of uh, FY24. Uh, with us on the call today is uh, from our finance team and uh, Stellar IR advisors uh, who are our uh, investor relations advisor. We have uploaded the investor presentation on the website of the stock exchanges and we hope you have had a chance to go through it. Um, let me begin by going through the numbers for the quarter first. Uh, so the net revenue came in at uh, rupees uh, 2.538, uh, sorry, uh, to 253 crores uh, um, and grew by around 20% quarter on quarter in line with the seasonality factor where, uh, you know, usually the Q1 and Q2 has uh, and they advise that volumes 1,447 metric tons, which is a 21% quarter-on-quarter growth. In comparison to the same quarter of the previous year, there was a volume decline of 8% year-on-year and a realization decline of 14% year-on-year to rupees 697 per kilo per kg of exported product. Uh, this can be attributed uh, to a high base uh, with regard to the Q1 of FY23, which was uh, also our uh, highest uh, quarter. But uh, importantly, uh, but due to the uh, subdued demand from our uh, key and main market, uh, um, USA. Um, just to reiterate, uh, on the balance sheet side, our debt continues to decline uh, as we judiciously use our surplus cash flows to deleverage our balance sheet. Our working capital cycle, too, uh, is seeing uh, good improvement. Um, the achievement underscores our commitment to improving our financial health and, of course, um, underscores our uh, prudent management of resources. With regard to uh, the demand centers from our company, um, the U.S. food at home inflation and food outside home inflation numbers remained uh, pretty high. This had a dual impact. The demand fell while the retail prices remained high, um, causing inventory buildup at distributors and uh, stores. Based on the uh, customers, um, we understand that the promotional activities by retail and food service companies are being carried out, albeit uh, gradually to reduce the high cost inventory that they were carrying from the past. So we understand that this situation is easing uh, slowly and should be better in the next couple of quarters, um, at least towards by the end of the uh, calendar year, as we look forward for the holiday uh, period. Uh, hopefully the consumption also would be improving uh, during that time for the holiday sales, uh, considering that most of the low, lower priced products are available uh, at the disposal of the consumer, to the consumer base. Well, they, as once the inventory backlog is cleared, which is in the process, uh, we are cautiously optimistic that we should see a you know, revival in the demand. As a result of the slowdown in USA, our exports to China uh, increased and therefore our overall realizations saw a decline since um, the margins on our Chinese exports are relatively lower considering the nature of products that we ship to the market, uh, Chinese market, sorry. Uh, and our exports to the EU continued. However, just like more developed markets, there is still some hangover of the inflationary pressures. Um, however, we are uh, have been working and we have been quite reasonably successful in um, growing our sales to the EU market especially locking in some contracts with uh, uh, supermarket chains who were not there with the company in the earlier years. So we are also, uh, th this in a way is also, uh, 
you know, uh, is the result of our focus to diversify our markets too. So that we are working in that direction and definitely, uh, up, yes, we definitely consider uh, Europe, European markets and uh, European countries market as well as the United Kingdom market for us as the key markets for us and you know, slowly seeing a steady growth there in, in, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of um, at a global level, uh, of course, uh, Ecuador shrimp supply, uh, the shrimp supplies continue to add some pressure on realizations. Um, however, from a competitive positioning perspective, India is still ahead both on costs as well as uh, value-added products. Uh, we are hopeful that this combination of factors eases out over the next couple of months and we should have a better uh, second half of the year, of course, uh, subject to the supply situations uh, uh, with regard to the stocking at the ponds and also the availability of the shrimp supply. Um, to address these challenges and, of course, to ensure the optimal utilization of our facilities, we have uh, st taken steps to explore the new markets, which uh, I have just explained, um, mainly focusing on our markets outside USA and uh, uh, focusing more on the Europe and UK market also. This strategic move will not only, you know, diversify our revenue streams, but also enhance, enhance our resilience, uh, resilience in the face of the market fluctuations. Uh, however, uh, it's important to note that while we are entering these new markets, uh, we remain cautiously optimistic about the overall market scenario. This applies to both demand trends and supply of raw shrimp, which I just explained, especially considering the complexities surrounding uh, shrimp production uh, in India. Uh, in conclusion, while the past year has presented its share of challenges, we remain committed to adaptability and growth. We are actively navigating the you know various market dynamics by expanding into new markets and working on uh, improving efficiencies uh, of our operations. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. And I now open the floor for the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touch one telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press start and one to ask the question. The first question is from the line of Yogan Jaswani from Mittal Analytics. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, please. Yes. Uh, uh, we have been working on expanding our uh, RTE capacity by 5,000 metric tons. I think uh, yes. in one of the presentation slides mentioned that by end of May 23, it got commissioned. So could you just share with a uh, little bit more about uh, on this? In terms of production that we saw during Q1 or the entire production of it will get streamlined from Q2 onwards. And uh, for the year FI24, how much are we expecting to do from the RT? Uh, as you uh, mentioned, uh, and it is the fact that we have uh, commercialized the production uh, during and towards the end of May, and uh, almost in June we started the commercial production. The impact of that, of course, um, is more uh, to be effective from Q2 onwards. And uh, in the present scenario, the way the markets are, and like we have emphasized in the past too, uh, that our focus definitely will be to utilize that capacity, uh, you know, uh, in a much optimum manner, even if it means that we, I mean, in the, in the reduced market scenario, we would definitely focus on utilizing that capacity more. And typically the RTE products go mainly into, and actually the majority, almost all of it goes into retail and supermarket chains uh, only. And it's very, very, um, uh, it's with regard to the food service. So sorry to interrupt you, uh, but we are losing your audio. 
sorry you can hear me now hello yes sir hello yes uh, so typically uh, the uh, rte products are mainly uh, taken by the retail markets uh, or supermarkets and it is less by uh, restaurant chains or food service markets and uh, with that we are actually working with some of the retail markets very uh, carefully to ensure that we lock in the trigger of the rt products uh, for the sizes which we have available in our uh, supply uh, market and we are confident of using them in fact as i said the focus is also to use that uh, uh mostly uh, even in the even in a reduced scenario we want to do and that is how the present situation also is that um, the orders what we are taking are mostly pertaining to rte thereby we can increase the not only the uh, production of those and utilize not only utilizing the capacity but also the expanded capacity of the 5000 additional 5000 making it totally 10000 metric ton capacity but also um, yeah, earning uh, at a value for that product or product for the production whatever we are doing and yeah and we are also now uh, more confident we just understand that uh, the eu market also is opening up because the in context to rte for the past 3 uh, years we were uh, disabled uh, literally we are we were handicapped to supply to the eu market and now we have some positive news that they are going to uh if through our new facility to so that way that is very positive news for us uh, for our company as such to so that we can also tap that market which even though it is our next biggest market after the US we could not do any of the RTE so uh, i think both of them um, our capacity coming into play as well as this new market opening up positively very soon is going to help us in utilizing or the RTE capacity of 10000 metric tons to an optimum level of at least 7000 to 8000 tons in the, in going forward that is the optimum utilization at the best and we you know look forward to use it in phases based on the market conditions and of course supply also oh, all right this is the approval that you were uh, you just mentioned about from the european union market uh, any timelines on that by when do we expect to get this approval we were actually waiting uh, for it uh, for the past 2 years literally actually more than 2 years but we yeah. just uh, had a report which got released from them and uh, the eu uh, we got uh, information that they have uh, seen the positive uh, positives of the um, you know systems in india and they are now better with better confidence with regard to the indian um, facilities and thereby we understand that they are going to approve all those new facilities which have not been approved since 2000 end of 2019 so we uh, until last year we didn't have any clue but now once the report is out from them and uh, we expect them to uh, go through that process very soon and now even we are also pursuing with the indian government i think hopefully in before the end of this q2 or in the early part of q3 we should have that that's what we are positive we are but much more positive now than uh, earlier because after the report la- latest report from the eu gov- eu health authorities has come up okay so broadly if we have to think about it in terms of the in- indian industry ship industry uh, how many uh, players would you think would have a approved capacity from european union are those are those numbers too few and that market is just opening up or there are fairly uh, bigger players who have have exposure to see the uh, uh, no no see the market is has been there all the time uh, it is our existing customers who are currently um, you know sourcing those products from some other countries some other nations uh, whether it is vietnam or indonesia or some extent from bangladesh example uh they have been doing that and they were looking forward for uh, our products like they already buy ready to cook products from our company and they also wanted to add the ready to eat products also uh, uh from us uh, because they know that we have the certification processes and we they we have a consistent relationship which we have built with them unfortunately because of the uh, pending uh, regulatory approval process uh, which was 
in like hanging in the air between the two governments i mean the in, in india and uh, uh, eu commission that got stalled and both uh, the customer as well as uh, the various customers in the eu as well as our company were eagerly waiting for this to get over so that we could also uh, you know get these products because currently we are already delivering to all the retail supermarket requirements and we started adding more but we were severely handicapped with regard to um, you know shipping our ready to eat products there so the market was already there so it's not like it's a new market which is being created but with our competitiveness in general and also the consistent quality which our company has and our uh, um, you know dependence of our customers on our products and their commitment and the, the confidence which they have in our, in our products we were working with them and it's not like it's it's a new market and we are tapping up something new that market is already existing how we grow it once we start supplying to the customers will uh, is a altogether a different topic but that market is already there in the eu currently the supermarkets are already holding cook products or ready to eat products from other markets other sorry other supplying nations actually i i agree with you said that european market exists uh, what i meant to ask was in terms of uh, indian suppliers how many indian facilities would be out there who are approved by european union for uh, rte products uh, well most of these suppliers yeah ready to eat uh, i think uh, i think maybe uh, almost uh, around 40 to 50 maybe i'm just giving a ballpark number but uh, they were there even before 2019 but it just depends on where the suppliers or the processing facilities are focused on so if uh, a significant part of these facilities are focused on I uh, remember these facilities are located all, located all over in India and it depends which market they are focused on if they, they are mainly focused on US or also some of those facilities produce um, mainly the sea cod wild caught shrimp which they produce as uh, salad shrimp for uh, other markets like middle east or you know europe also but when it comes to um, aquaculture products uh, from anime and say black tiger to certain extent um uh, i think uh, almost yeah uh, now currently they should be around more than little over 50 also already facilities are there but it's just that different facilities are focused on different markets different uh, different export markets okay so and uh, one last question from my and then i'll get back in the queue to uh, if we look at the trend of last couple of years we did see that in us we faced uh, extensive high uh, competition from ecuador and we did lose uh, some market share to them and uh, our expectation as an industry was that as and when the china market opens up ecuador business will shift back to them and the us business will come back to india so are there any signs of that happening or uh, are we still seeing that uh, ecuador is still uh, you know giving us good competition in uh, us given the fact that demand is still low and you know, prices are still very competitive uh, the thing is uh, ecuador yeah, is supplying and they have increased their uh, production to beyond uh, 1 million metric tons of raw material which is i think they are almost looking at 1.2 to 1.5 million metric tons this year that's what we hear from various uh, news uh, and articles published uh, uh, at the same time um, they we did expect that uh, once china uh, opens up uh, ecuador will be looking uh, to you know um uh, go back to china and we would be looking at uh, we will be we will be having more space in the us uh, but uh, the way things are currently you know uh, the focus is now less of uh, how we are going to beat each other uh, in a, on competition basis but um, the focus is more of promoting and um, you know increasing the consumption of the shrimp for which uh, 
uh, in the recent past, there have been discussions happening of a uh, global uh, marketing effort between uh, the company, uh, sorry, countries of Ecuador uh, and India and other Asian countries too. The idea is to increase the shrimp consumption now, given the new, um, you know, low um, lower cost at which the product can be uh, purchased. And uh, when we are comparing the amount of consumption which is happening per capita with regard to meat, I mean, say poultry and where we are placed. Earlier, the pricing was quite high, at least until last year. Now, with all this new supply coming in and pricing also uh, softening, um, there are discussions to actually um, put a joint marketing effort to overall increase the shrimp consumption. Of course, there have been, um, I mean, I'm just answering your question indirectly because um, there have also been discussions about increasing it in India overall, but again, it takes it takes a lot of time for India, but other countries which are already existingly consuming, it is definitely, uh, it can be looked at. So when it comes to China, they are also actually sitting with quite good inventories and and by the way, most of the inventories, which I have also mentioned in the opening remarks, uh, which are there in most of the importing markets, whether it is USA, Europe, or China, they are definitely all high-priced products, which we need to understand that uh, none of the distributors or the importers or the sellers of such products in those markets are uh, willing to just you know, reduce the prices because there is a new flow or uh, the flow of new newer product which is coming at lower pricing is available. So definitely the inventories which are there were a concern and they are as those inventories are getting cleared, it helps. One. Second thing is the inventories which all of them hold, most of them are higher priced and definitely when the higher priced inventories are getting cleared, the space uh, will be created for new product as well as when the new product is coming at a lower price, whether it is from India, Ecuador, or whichever country, definitely that is going to support. And added uh, to that, these kind of joint marketing efforts, which are in discussions and hopefully they take place uh, with the support and contribution of all the you know different producing nations. Overall consumption of shrimp is the current focus. Um, we are looking uh, positively at that part, but um, in China, uh, currently, it's still uh, kind of slow, and uh, this has uh, Ecuador did shift a little bit to China. I mean, um, post uh, their opening, but overall, as we mentioned, as I mentioned earlier in the uh, opening remarks, the inventory levels uh, were quite high, uh, and as they get consumed, we should see a better uh, uh, space made available in all these markets going forward in the next few months. At least that's what we expect big time between the holidays uh, uh, towards the end of this year till um, and when it comes to China, uh, more than the holidays, it is the Chinese Spring Festival, which is around February, which is a big time, uh, big period uh, for consumption. So that's what it is. Okay. Just one last thing. Uh, on the overall shrimp industry, typically Q2 is a better quarter for all the shrimp processors. So uh, going forward, do we expect a, um, you know some improvement in the business and how is the overall uh, cropping uh, been this, this quarter? And what's the trend like? Uh, in the Q2, uh, generally, like you said, uh, because as you know, keeping aside quarters of the Indian financial year or the general calendar year, uh, typically the, uh, you know, the uh, tropical climate and uh, the uh, period of uh, May, uh, June, July, August typically are a good time for production to happen. Um, that is why historically we always see Q1 and Q2 and typically the first half of the year um, uh, being better uh, uh, performance period during the uh, Indian financial year. That's what we see in our industry. And in this year, uh, however, uh, Q2, there are some issues which we kind of foresee with regard to supply. Um, the stockings have been kind of 
uh, not aggressive like they have been in the past. Uh, remember uh, always that it is the demand which motivates the supply, right? Uh, so naturally, when the demand is uh, slow um, or it has been kind of uh, going at a uh, slow pace, definitely that will also have an impact on how the supply is made or made available or created. So definitely the uh, slower demand during the end of uh, last financial year and uh, during the Q1 of the current financial year does have its uh, impacts or ramifications on how the supply is being uh, made available. And uh, we do see that there are farmers who have been going for stocking the delayed rains or rather delayed monsoon in the south of India also gave us a good uh, supply uh, con continuously for the past uh, two to three months, at least two months especially. Um, and the sizes were also growing. We have bigger sizes which have been made available, which was not the case earlier because of the dominance of uh, Chinese demand in the past. Uh, so most of the farmers were focused on smaller sizes, which is not the case now. They are also focusing on uh, medium and larger sizes, which is a big change in the approach and uh, attitude of the primary producing uh, community. And uh, so in the Q2, however, we see that there could be certain issues on the supply side as the stockings are not the same uh, like they were in the earlier uh, year or the past few years because of how the demand has been. But definitely um, the farmers or primary producers who have been consistent in their uh, activity have been uh, stocking. So that way we are okay, we expect product to be there uh, for sure. But it, uh, we wouldn't say that we will be, um, you know, doing the same numbers or same volume rather like what we did in the first half of last year. I mean, that is the, the fact, that is a fact actually. Uh, so definitely um, it will be a little bit subdued in relative naturally, as I said, it's in relation to the demand. The, the demand, the supply moves in tandem to the demand. So that is the current uh, status. Mm, got it. So that was really a Thank you and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Ranodeep from MES Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so I wanted to understand the dynamics uh, for the shrimp sector as as we've seen labor charges going up and so has been the feed prices. But on the other hand, the selling prices have been going down. Uh, so when you see these trends reversing and what are the projections in near term? Uh, in the current year, of course, uh, as we have uh, been giving a conservative uh, outlook, uh, uh, even though we did plan um, in a big way for the current year uh, in the late part of last year during Q4. However, uh, with the way the all the inflationary pressures coming in and all the issues uh, which have been happening in overseas markets, um, the demand definitely affected the selling prices naturally uh, uh, and the demand was should we say was it a slowdown of the demand and or or uh, whether it was more supply and more product made available thereby uh, you know the basically the demand did not pick up or rather it did not go on par with the, how the supply was being made available for various uh, reasons and multiple you know multiple factors whether it is the uh, stoppage of the, uh, you know, the monies which people were receiving in markets like U.S. from the government post uh, during COVID, whether it is the, the, the factors like that or uh, whether the supermarkets and other uh, food service uh, chains were having inventories of other more expensive products like crab and they were more focused on, fo uh, you know, promoting those products. Whatever, uh, end of the day, it did affect the demand of 
our uh, products, Western products, definitely, uh, for multiple reasons. Now, when this has happened, definitely our pricing has come down. Now, when it comes to the production side, uh, we wouldn't be able to come in much on the feed prices uh, because you just mentioned that. But when it comes to labor costs, of course, we are focused on how we uh, produce and uh, efficiently and we manage our costs to the best uh, possible. And uh, given the scenario, uh, the uh, biggest uh, affected party in the whole supply chain in the current, uh, uh, say, uh, you know, market trend is the primary producer, the farmer. Uh, definitely, you know, see, without uh, the primary producer is the one who has been at least uh, having the, uh, you know, most part of the margin in the entire supply chain. Uh, and uh, their uh, margins would have get affected definitely. And um, they are also, you know, uh, rationalizing their costs and bringing down the way they are changing their strategies, which we did explain in the earlier con calls too, that as the market demands each of us, whether we as a processor and exporter or whether it is the primary producer, we all have to look at our costs and kind of, um, you know, bring them to a lower level. Um, whatever we can bring them. Like, so for example, if the stocking densities at the pond level is coming down, naturally the energy requirements or the amount of uh, feed which is used uh, or, you know, the labor requirements, naturally all that will be coming down. And also uh, slowly uh, Indian side when the costing actually of the labor actually really increases significantly. Um, already some of the farmers or primary producers have already moved to automatic feeders and all that and which is by the way very dominant in countries like Ecuador. India is also has been moving but quite slow in, in that direction uh, with regard to automation and reducing, I mean sorry, depending less on uh, manpower. We can't zero the manpower but it will be there. And uh, same is the case with regard to processing where we do bring in newer equipment to uh, produce the products in a much efficient manner, just not freezers and, you know, cookers, but also the material handling equipment. So the idea is that we can, uh, any sort of uh, inefficiencies due to the manpower and thereby increasing our cost to mitigate that we would be focusing on these sort of measures. Um, and as the demand picks up, definitely the unit value, even the, sorry, the farm gate prices also would be uh, picking up. But for now, everybody has been uh, come to an understanding that this market uh, is to be maintaining at around these levels for the near term, near future. So thereby, within that uh, uh, market scenario, within those pricings, within the, uh, you know, um, farm gate prices, the, whether it is a primary producer or we as a processor, we are working out in bringing down our costs. And if you see, our costs actually have actually have come down. I don't, I mean, it. Uh, the reason being, we did have, uh, earlier we used to have a lot of casual workers also, um, we who were uh, there, and now we have minimized those workers and whoever are there. On we are trying to do better with lesser number of people. Otherwise, we cannot bring down our costs. I mean, in it, because you pointed out the cost of labor, so it has not increased significantly. But at the same time, we are also focused on bringing out better uh, efficiencies out of them. So thereby, we can kind of you know keep the costs to a, to a reasonable level. But we still have to look out for an increase in the demand uh, on the uh, from the overseas markets. Until then, we'll have to carefully plan our production with the current infrastructure and manpower available with us. Sure, sure. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, my next question, sir, was in terms of uh, is Russia emerging as a big market of, uh, for us to export as uh, shrimp? I'm um, asking this with a background where uh, I don't know, a few months ago we had some reports where uh, Russia's XY, XY group was looking at uh, importing some 8,000 tons of shrimp. 
so uh, so is apex looking like russia as a big market uh, if yes any 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 uh, news on that see uh, yeah in the case of uh, russia there are uh, certain issues with i mean post uh, ukraine war and um, i mean when the present crisis with russia but yes there have been inquiries from russia but at the same time the with the way the payment terms work we did not really go for it in an aggressive manner and um one company saying um, they want to uh, say sub, they are likely to buy 8000 metric tons doesn't it is a it's basically over a period which they focus on whether it is 8000 or somebody says 5000 tons it's over a period and it all depends on how um markets react and uh, which we all know in today's situation inflation is there uh, everywhere uh, all in all the areas so i don't know how uh, well they are um actually re- you know reacting to the market conditions but currently we are open and we have been discussing with some players in russia but we have not made any great uh, strides with regard to growing the russian market uh um, however when you know when we compared it that's why our focus was more on the europe side uh, and now we are also having some east european countries which have been sending us inquiries but the major importing markets for shrimp products will be usa and china and followed by eu will be these will be the major ones and rest all of them i mean for volumes what we talk or our company speaks they wouldn't or the other markets wouldn't be a significant uh, uh market as such but still we are not as we are focusing to diversify we are not leaving any markets untouched as i said i mentioned even east european area we are looking at where uh, we can do a decent or reasonable volume if not very high volume so we are we have been approached and we are also making establishing contacts that that's how we are working on currently both i mean by you in the you mentioned russia i kind of more uh, responded with regard to east european countries sure sure uh, thank thanks for the update sir my last question sir uh, i mean have we seen any incremental market share gain at a global uh, level see overall we understand that the that the demand shrinkage that has happened but uh, have we overall at an overall basis have we gained market share uh, and if you can just give us the statistics in terms of what is our market share in the global side you i'm sorry your question was related to india growing its market share is that what you said uh no sir at a global basis uh what have, what has been india's market share that was the first question Check and have we seen any uh, incremental growth of india's market share going up at a global basis my next part of the question was what is the market share of apex at a global basis yeah, the first question india's market share did not grow because you also need to understand we got staggered down at 1 million or lesser metric tons of production right and uh, and parallelly then you also hear that producing nations like ecuador are increasing 1 million or beyond 1 million 1.2 1.5 million metric tons the question of uh, india increasing its market share actually does not arise there are only two ways we increase our market share either we increase our production thereby we supply to you know existing nations as well as other sorry existing uh, markets as well as other uh, new markets or the other way is the rest of the players in the world other producing nations uh, fall down in their production now in our case i mean sorry in the present case what you we are all aware is that ecuador has been increasing its production and whereas our production kind of got stagnated or rather quite quite saturated at one some certain point so the question of increasing our market share doesn't really take place that is to answer your first question we have uh, in fact uh, the uh, point here is to maintain 
the current market share is the key aspect. That is the immediate requirement where uh, one of the earlier, uh, I think the earlier participant has asked whether, uh, you know, whether we are actually, how do we uh, ensure that our market at least maintains, you know, so because that is more key, especially when you have a country like Ecuador increasing its production. So that is one part. Second part is regarding the company when you asked, did we increase our market share? Our volumes overall have dropped compared to uh, last year's uh, quarter. And this year, supply is also kind of slow, and overall demand is slow. But however, because, say, our primary customers in U.S. Uh, have been slow or they have not really purchased much from us, we did not stop there. So we actually, of course, we might be realizing less of value and we might be having lesser margins when we do some products or baseline products to markets like China or rather we do the medium-sized uh, products to European market. We are still moving, uh, diversifying so that at least our, you know, fixed costs get absorbed. That is the background where our market share to countries like EU and UK have been increasing even if the U.S. market share has fallen down for us. So I'm just, I think I answered both your questions, um, both in the perspective of the country as well as our company. So, sure, sure, sure. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for patiently answering and giving a detailed overview. Thank you and wishing you all the best luck for the next quarter. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference to the management for closing comments. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so thank you very much uh, to one and all for uh, making it to our call uh, of the Q1 FY24. Uh, and uh, we uh, thank you for your patience uh, hearing uh, about the updates. And for any further queries and clarifications, you can always uh, reach out to uh, us on IR, email address IR at apexfrozenfoods.com. And uh, thank you, one and all. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. On behalf of Apex Frozen Foods Limited that concludes this conference, thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.